ಶ್ರೀಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನುಭುನಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂ ಕರ್ವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧಿ ತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾ ವಿದ್ವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಅಸತೋ ಮಾ ಸದ್ಗಮಯ ತಮಸೋ ಮಾ ಜ್ಯೋತಿರ್ಗಮಯ ಮೃತ್ಯೋರ್ಮಾ ಅಮೃತ ಗಮಯ ಆವಿರಾವಿರ್ಮಯಿಧಿ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹರಿ ಓಂ let we be protected let we be nourished let we strive with energy and vigor let our study be enlightening and not give rise to hostility om peace 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 lead us to truth and not to untruth lead us to enlightenment and not ignorance lead us to immortality and not death let the self manifest atman grow in me om peace 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 before we start we'll have a reading from the complete works of swami vivekananda by the grace of god we are starting a new book vedanta sar David are you there David Oh sorry, sorry I was muted Okay so start from one principle it lays down it's a very long passage that you have selected Oh start from one principle Yeah Okay all right Um one principle it lays down and that the vedanta claims is to be found in every religion in the world that man is divine that all this which we see around us is the outcome of that consciousness of the divine everything that is strong and good and powerful in human nature is the outcome of that divinity and though potential in many there is no difference between man and man essentially all being alike divine there is as it were an infinite ocean behind and you and i are so many waves coming out of that infinite ocean infinite ocean and each one of us is trying his best to manifest that infinite outside so potentially each one of us has that infinite ocean of existence knowledge and bliss as our birthright our real nature and the difference between us is caused by the greater or lesser power to manifest that divine Therefore the Vedanta lays down that each man should be treated not as what he manifests but as what he stands for. Each human being stands for the divine and therefore every teacher should be helpful not by condemning man but by helping him to call forth the divinity that is within him. So this is we call Brahman or Vedanta calls it Brahman. Brahman is our ultimate reality we feel we experience that we exist but we identify with what we are not vedanta tries to get back to that identity what we really are so that is the highest common factor where we all are outer manifestations like all are waves but behind that is that ocean ocean of existence ocean of awareness ocean of bliss yes go ahead it also teaches that all the vast mass of energy that we see displayed in society and in every plane of action is really from inside out <laughs> and therefore 
what is called inspiration by other sects, the Vedantist begs the liberty to call the expiration of man. At the same time, it does not quarrel with other sects. The Vedanta has no quarrel with those who do not understand this divinity of man. Consciously or unconsciously, every man is trying to unfold that divinity. Man is like an infinite spring coiled up in a small box, and that spring is trying to unfold itself. And all the social phenomena that we see... So Vedanta has got few very important identity. One is, it has no narrowness. It is freedom from narrowness, all kinds of narrowness. And freedom from all limitations. We have many doctrines and dogmas. But Vedanta does not dispute with them. The other says, okay, you go ahead. But ultimately, you are to realize your own self. So the second thing is, it is impersonal. Impersonal. It does not depend on any person. Impersonal principle. And it includes all. All inclusive. It is not, it does not reject anything. We are all traveling to the same goal. Maybe we have achieved different stages of same traveling, but we need to reach that same goal. And it is rational. The Vedanta is very rational. And uh, Logic is a, a tool because after a certain time logic fails, it goes beyond logic. So it is, though it is logical, but it is not bound by logic. And the Vedanta, the beauty of it is the, that the result is here and now. You need not wait till the eternity or till the doomsday when this whole world crum crumbles and then you are released from your grave. No, it is here and now. So this is the beauty of Vedanta. Yes, go ahead. Man is like an infinite spring coiled up in a small box and that spring is trying to unfold itself. And all the social phenomenon that we see the result of this trying to unfold. All the competitions and struggles and evils that we see around us are neither the causes of these unfoldments nor the effects. As one of our great philosophers says, in the case of the irrigation of a field, the tank is somewhere upon a higher level and the water is trying to rush into the field and is barred by a gate. But as soon as the gate is open, the water rushes in by its own nature. And if there is dust and dirt in the way, the water rolls over them. But dust and dirt are neither the result nor the cause of this unfolding of the divine nature of man. They are coexistent circumstances and therefore can be remedied. Okay, so this is Swamiji referred the Patanjali of Yoga Sutra. So Yoga Sutra, in Yoga Sutra it is said, there is like a field. What we have to do, we have to remove the obstruction. And the divinity gushes through. Divinity manifests. Only we need to remove the negative points. What are the negative? Our desires, our anger, hatred, jealousy. These are the impediments. If we can remove this, then we can realize the divinity here and now. Yes. Now this idea, claims the Vedanta, is to be found in all religions, whether in India or outside of it. Only in some of them, the idea is expressed through mythology and in others through symbology. The Vedanta claims that there has not been one religious inspiration, 
one manifestation of the divine man, however great, but it has been the expression of that infinite oneness in human nature. And all that we call ethics and morality and doing good to others is also but the manifestation of this oneness. There are moments when every man feels that he is one with the universe and he rushes forth to express it, whether he knows it or not. This expression of oneness is what we call love and sympathy, and it is the basis of all of our ethics and morality. This is summed up in the Vedanta philosophy by the celebrated aphorism, Tattva Masi, Thou Art That. So, the goal is fixed. To travel anywhere, first we have to set the goal. What is that? Thou art that. You are that same divine. So here, this is the Prakarana Grantha. Prakarana means Prakrishta Rupena Karuti. That means it accomplishes well, very well. So this, what we are going to read is Vedanta Sara. The gist of Vedanta. Gist of Vedanta. You know, this is the age of instant. Instant coffee, instant money. Everything is instant. Instant information. So here, Vedanta is very vast. What are the essential points? That is, that's one should know. As we know, that uh, Sanatana Dharma or eternal religion or what we call Hindu Dharma. Hindu Dharma has got a corpus of literature. It's very vast. Even one cannot cover the one portion of it in the whole of his life. So first is Shruti, Smriti and Purana. What are those? Shruti. Shruti means whatever we hear. Shruti. Whatever we heard. From whom? From our gurus. You know, previously, the knowledge used to be transferred by rote, orally. There was no writing. And it is good that there was no writing. Why? Because handwritings are different, scripts are different, it's difficult to decipher. But oral transmission is better. So what happened? Our rishis, they were very pious people, righteous, and pure in heart. And as Christ said, those who are pure in heart will see God. So they meditated for long hours in the forest. They took a little fruits and roots. They meditated for long hours. And in course of time, truth was revealed to them. Those truths are transmitted by rote, by mouth. So that is called Sruti. Smriti that means what we heard. So that's a kind of uh, literature where a Shrutidhar, a person who listens very carefully and he can repeat the whole thing. So he would go to a place where a guru is giving discourse and he'll listen everything very carefully. And wherever he goes, he repeats the same thing. And later it was recorded. So first set is called Shruti, where the Vedas, Upanishads. And mind it, we, we did not lose anything. Only we lost the, when the family is dead. Otherwise, we have ten traditions. In India we have ten traditions. And it is very interesting to know how they preserved. They go forward, come back, go forward, come, and like this. 
sahana 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 bhagavad gita say go back go go forward and come back and go forward there is a system jata part dhana part ten kinds of such disciplines by which not even a period or a comma is lost only we lost those scriptures where the family the whole family died and there was no person to continue that tradition so that is shruti smriti is a different kind of uh, literature where a shruti dhar who can hear and memorize he would go to various places and repeat the same thing so that is smriti and then third is purana mythology actually not it is not mythology it is purana it's called itihas itihasa it happened like this that means whatever happened on that some teachings are uh, implanted and it is explained so that way lots of principles are enunciated and it is explained to the devotees so itihas purana puranas then agams various kinds of agamas agamas are instructions to how to do rituals and make temples etc so these are theoretical treatises a manual of divine worship etc and then there are principles philosophies 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 means out of all these they try to extract some ideas which are consistent which are graspable and which can be conveyed so that is called philosophies darshana and you know as you know shruti uh, four shrutis that um, rig veda yajur veda sam veda atharva veda some have got hymns and some are rituals and some are music based it can be sung and some other things are also there then other than this these are great corpus of literature but other than that is samhita samhita so that mantra the vedas are divided into samhita means mantras are there then brahmanas so that means the elaboration of those then aranyaka so that is bridging course to the retreat retiring from this world then comes upanishad so upanishad is the gist of the knowledge available but even upanishads are also 108 or more at least 108 so they have various sections one is called karma kanda where many uh, the vedas vedas are divided into karma kanda upasana kanda and gyana kanda karma kanda means rituals by which one achieves certain goal then upasana means sitting close to god and the third is gnana kanda means knowledge portion where knowledge is attained now knowledge is very important if you see even animals have got some knowledge they know how to survive they know how to fear so it has many connotations knowledge has got many connotations some one portion of knowledge is for our protection 
another portion is for our survival. But there is a portion which releases us from this rigmarole of this world. It is totally, that is, releasing. It will release totally. So this is, so what happens when we want to know something? We concentrate and we dedicate our life and that time we feel some even warmth. Tapa, tapasa chiyate brahman. And ultimately this knowledge releases us from the bondage that we feel. So, karma kanda, upasana kanda and jnana kanda. See, three limbs are there. To understand Veda, there are some other disciplines like grammar, etymology, astrology, then phonetic, phonetics, prosody and uh, kalpa, that means Veda in action. So Vyakarana, grammar, Nirukta, etymology, Jyotisha, astrology, Shiksha, phonetics, and Chandas, prasadi, and Kalpa is Veda in action. So all these are big, big uh, ocean of knowledge. And there are some Upavedas also, Ayurveda, then Artha Veda, Gandharva Veda, then Sthapatya Veda, all kinds of things. And in Smriti also, the Itihas, Purana, Agama, it's a very various things. And then, based on this, there are so many things. First, the original books, and then some commentaries, then sub-commentaries, some notes, so all kinds of things, it's a like huge ocean of literature. How to understand this? So it is difficult to understand. Therefore, they tried to philosophize. So there are six system of philosophy. So one is called um, Sankhya. Sankhya, so they tried to figure out the common points, Sankhya. And um, Yoga, and then Nyaya. Nyaya means re, uh, realism or logic, and Vaisheshika. Then Purva Mimamsa and Uttar Mimamsa. So all these are based on Vedas. So we call it Astika philosophy. Astika means theistic. Nastika philosophy means which are non-theistic. They don't believe in God or they don't believe in Vedas. They ha their rationality is logic or their base is logic. So especially Jain and Baudha philosophies are like that. So we are concerned about Astika philosophy, that means our base is Vedas. On Vedas, whatever we, uh, we found, we based on that Vedas. So Vedas, as I already said, there there are six schools of philosophies. One is called Sankhya, then Yoga, then Vaisheshika, and Nyaya, Nyaya and Vaisheshika, and Purva Mimamsa, Uttar Mimamsa. Purva Mimamsa deals with rituals, but Uttar Mimamsa base, bases on knowledge. So we are that part, in that part. So 
Vedanta philosophy. Again, Vedanta philosophy has got dualistic and then Vishishta Advaita and Advaita, non-dualistic. So these three. So what we will do, this is non-dualistic. This Prakarana Grantha, the epitome or the um, the introductory, this is very very good for introduction. So this is Prakarana Grantha Prakrishta Rupene Karatiha. So what is the basis base point? Let, let us recount. This has no narrowness that you are to believe in some god or goddess or anything else. It is universal. It is not limited. So this is very important. Second, it includes all. It has no fight with anybody. You know, like in a school, there will be primary classes, there may be secondary classes, tertiary classes, all are possible. We have no dispute. We don't say this is the only truth. Okay, you go ahead, wherever you are. But this is dualist, uh, non-dualistic. That means it is all unifying. And it is, it is done rationally. It's not that somebody says and we say not yes, yes, yes. No. All are rationally established. What is the fruit of it? The fruit is here and now. Very important. All other will tell, okay, you are to be blessed after your death. Not here, there. Not now, then, when you passes, pass away. But here, this is the philosophy which says, the fruit is available here and now, like karam lakvat. Fruit is in your palm. No need of any outer evidence. There are three things. One is called pramana. Pramana means evidence. Prameya. Evidence for what? To prove something. And pramiti. The process of process of uh, proving something. So, process of proving something, there should be a pramana, that means evidence, and for what? To achieve a goal. Our importance should be given to achieve the goal. Not, we don't give a stress, stress or we don't give importance to evidences that much. We are more um, mindful, more mindful about the goal of life. We want to achieve the goal. That is more important than anything else. So this is um, in short, the, the introduction, but what is the topic here? What is the subject point? The subject is Tat Tvam Asi. You are that. You are that divine. Each soul is potentially divine. And to manifest this divinity is the goal of life as Swami Vivekananda said. Do it by work or worship or psychic control or knowledge and be free. Freedom is the goal of life. The bliss is the goal of life. We don't want to be miserable. Nobody wants to be miserable. Nobody wants to be bound. Everybody has that urge of freedom. So this is very important. And Vedan says it is achievable. Not only achievable, it is you here and now. 
But why we don't realize it? Because there are some obstructions, some obstacles. We have to get rid of those obstructions, not that we want to remove something. Rather, we want to cultivate something with, by which all the obstacles are removed. Then it is there. What is happening? You are covering your eyes and you can say that I cannot see the sun. Okay, remove your hands. Don't cover your eyes and see the light. So Vedanta says, remove your hands from your eyes and see the light. So, this is the introduction. Let us go forward. So, Tat Tvam Asi. You are that. You are not ordinary person. You are that divine. And we are to realize this divinity that is already within us. We don't have to go here and there. No need of buying or selling something. No need of borrowing something from someone. It is our birthright that we have to achieve. This is the goal of life. If we don't do, then we are miserable. Then we are nobodies. So this is to be done. This is the gist of this even Vedanta. Shlokardhena pravakshami yaduktam grantha koti vi. I'll tell you in half a shloka what has been enunciated in millions of and millions of books. And what is that? Brahma alone is real. And this world, uh, Brahma, Shlokardhena Pravakshami, Yaduktam Brahma, Koti Vi. Brahma Satyam Jagan Mithya. Jagan Mithya, Mithya means it is seeming. This world is seeming. It's not real. It is not uh, true. It looks like that. Why? It is because behind this is that same truth. So Brahma Satyam, that truth alone abides. Truth alone exists. And this world is only apparent. It looks like it is existing, but it is not. Every moment it is dying. Every moment. So this is the topic. So we'll go to the um, the text. So text starts with Akhandam Satchidanandam Avang Manasa Gocharam Atmanam Akhiladharam Asrai Abhishta Siddhai Now this, this is called Vedanta Sara, the gist of Vedanta and written by Sadananda Yogindra Saraswati. Saraswatis are very erudite and these are or Saraswati is one of the ten schools of sannyasa. Like we are from Puri. So Puri, Aranya, Samudra, Saraswati, like that. So ten kinds of sannyasa. Not ten kinds, ten uh, clan, clans or uh, uh, not sects. Orders, second, ten kinds of orders. So he is from Saraswati, Sadananda Yogindra. And he lived after 1386. That means because he mentions here about Vidyaranya. And before 1588, we, his uh, his disciple wrote a book, so that was later. So, roughly 
it was 15th century and he wrote this so we'll go to the text akhandam sachidanandam avang manasa gocharam atmanam akiladharam asray abhishta siddhe so abhishta siddhe comes first why i am doing i take refuge in the self in the self so i take refuge in the self because self is the center of everything the individual what kind of self is akhiladharam it is the basis or it is the substratum of everything atmanam akhiladharam asray i take refuge why i take refuge to complete my goal and what's that goal to achieve the unity and here the book completion of book it is that customary that in the beginning of writing something there is mangala charanam for three reasons one is it is a tradition number 2 so even if you don't have any other reason this is a tradition so you should, you must obey number 2 it is for completion of the endeavor the undertaking and the third it is for teaching others how one should work so this these are the three uh, per, uh, reasons why a mangala charanam that means invoking auspiciousness is um started in the beginning but there is another reason the fourth reason is in short it tells four things what is the goal what is the uh, topic subject subject matter what we are talking about and then who is the adhikari who can study this what is what should be the minimum qualification for this to study and then what is the sambandh someone what's the relationship with this text to the goal and what's the purpose prayojan why we should do this so first is adhikari who is the adhikari it, it will be dealt elaborately but in short who is the person who should study this and what is the topic what is the relationship with the teaching to achieve that goal and the fourth is what is the necessity what is the need the need is to go beyond bondages go beyond limitations get freedom to be established in bliss so that's the purpose and adhikari it will be dealt uh, in short uh, later so here akhandam sachidanandam avang manasa gocharam so first i take refuge in the self who is akhand without the division i take refuge in the self the indivisible the existence consciousness bliss absolute sat chit anand and beyond of reach of speech and mind so mind and speech is within the realm of mind 
has within this nature. It cannot reach there, but it only can be indicated. So this is the goal, Akhandam, Satchidanandam, and also the subject matter of this, Akhandam, Satchidanandam. It is individual. Avang Manusa Gocharam is beyond mind. How to reach them? By removing this breaking into mental modification. Removing this mental modification. That means by logic one can go to certain extent but after that logic also stops. There is no need of logic anymore but logic helps us to reach there. You know, as somebody rows, so rowing, as it, as the boat reaches the, the uh, shore, the person, the oar man, takes out the oars, and by the sheer momentum, it reaches the shore. When a person cuts a tree, he cuts almost everything, and then he push, pushes a little and it falls by its own weight. Similarly, after reaching to this conviction that there is, there are not many, neha, nana, asti, kinchana, then only one has to realize what is that which is not many, which appears as many. So by sheer Momentum one reaches there. So it is reachable. It is not beyond us because it is the basis of everything. Atmanam Akhiladharam is the basis of everything. See, I am talking. I am talking in and through this. You are listening. You are listening in and through this. Without this, even listening or speaking or any action is not possible. So this is, in short, I take refuge in the self, the individual, the existence, consciousness, bliss, absolute, beyond the reach of words and thought, and the substratum of all, for the attainment of my cherished desire. So, two things one has to understand. One is Atman and Paramatman. Atman is individual, individ, individ, individual self. So, I am there, you are there. So, individual. And when it is together, it is, we call it Paramatman. But both are not two. Actually it is one manifesting as true or multiple or many. It is not many. And it is the basis of one. Why? Yatova imani bhutani jayante yena jatani jivanti yat priyante navisham vishanti all the bhutas, everything has emanated from this. Everything has emanated from this. And it will go back to this. It exists also in this. Say like all kinds of bubbles, waves, ripples, everything is from the ocean. It exists in the ocean. And it absorbed, absorbed, they absorbed in the ocean. So like that. Atmanam Akhiladharam Asrai. So why I take refuge? Because then all our divisible actions will cease to exist. That is why we need to take refuge.
but it is beyond mind and speech. Therefore, we have no other means but to take refuge. No other means. Sarva dharman parityajya maam ekam sharanam brajya. Take refuge in me, leaving aside all your actions, all your businesses. There everything stops. So this is the first shloka, then we go to the next. It says, Arthato api advyananda. So after salutation to the divine, to the highest existence, to Brahman, or we can say God, because that's the popular word, but in, in Vedanta, God is with Maya. And Brahman is even beyond Maya. So when God, when Brahman wants to create, it holds its Maya. At that time the creator, preserver and destroyer, we call it God, Ishwara. But when he is not creating, not preserving, not absorbing, it stands in its own. Sve Pratishthita. So that is we call Brahman. So anirdeshyam, anirdeshyam. We cannot indicate. So after saluting that Brahman, that Brahman means again that not that here within us. Saluting and also taking refuge in him. Now comes he offers his salutations to his guru. Arthato api advyananda. Atita daita daita bhanata. Arthato api advyananda. Atita daita bhanata. Gurun aradhya vedanta saram vakshe yathamati. I'll speak as I understand, as it comes to me. We cannot go beyond our, um, beyond our capacity. So whatever capacity we have, we are to apply that capacity. Of course, when we try, that capacity increases. But yathamati, as I understand, as my understanding goes. So having worshipped the Guru who, on account of his being free from the illusion of duality, because he has gone beyond duality. So his Guru's name was Advayananda, Swami Advayananda. So Advayananda meaning means he enjoys the bliss of non-duality. So he says, not only his name, his meaning, he represented the meaning of his name. He's the epitome of his name. His manifestation of his name. He is personification of his name. Arthatopi, it is literally and its meaning, whatever meaning Advayananda is, he represented that, my Guru. Arthatopi Advayananda, Atita Dvaita Bhanata, because he was beyond the duality. The impressions of duality, the appearance of duality, he was beyond that. And I start with Gurun Aradhya. Worshipping my Guru, I start. Gurun Aradhya Vedanta Saram Bhakshi. I'll, I'll speak, means here writing Vedanta Saram. Vedanta Saram. Vakshi Yathamati. As I understand, as my intellect goes, 
I'll explain that. Having worshipped the Guru, who an account of his being free from the illusion of duality, manifest the meaning of his name, Advayanand, I undertake the task of expounding the essence of the Vedanta according to my light. So this is, in short, he invoked the divinity, that is Mangala Charanam. And after invoking, he enters into the text. And those who want to study and read this are the Adhikari. Only the intention should be there. Of course, in Vedanta, there should be another uh, qualification that's called Uhapoha. Uhapoha means he should understand the, both the logic and how to handle that logic. So, Uhapoha Vichakshan. Anyway, uh, and so Vishaya and Adhikari. And what is the Sambandha? Sambandha is relationship. When you study this, you will see how it is connected with the knowledge that it represents. What is the purpose? To go beyond duality. To go beyond all the limitations and achieving non-dual bliss, which is Sat Chit Ananda Swarupata which is beyond mind and speech. So, what is Vedanta? Now, Vedanta Sara comes. So, naturally, the first question comes, what is Vedanta? As it name goes, Veda Anta, the end of Veda, or end portion of Veda. What was that? One was Karma Kanda, Upasana Kanda, and Jnana Kanda. So Jnana Kanda was later, that's why Vedanta. Veda Anta. Gist. So we, later it is the gist of Vedas. Culminations or conclusion of Veda. So Vedanto Nama Upanishad Pramanam. So whatever Praman that we have, what is Vedanta? Vedanta Nama Upanishad Praman. So Basically, it is Upanishad. Gita also is Upanishad. At the end of every chapter, it is said, Srimad Bhagavad Gita Su, Upanishad Su, Brahma Vidyayam, Yoga Shastri, and such and such chapter. So it is Upanishad, Upanishad Nam. Or Tad Upakarini or whatever is supporting to that. Like that, Shariraka Sutradini. So whatever supports that, the Upanishads or the gist of knowledge that was conveyed through Upanishads. So that is Vedanta. Whatever Upanishads conveyed the gist of that is Vedanta. And whatever supports it, Vedanta is evidence of the Upanishads as well as the Sharirika Sutras. Sharirika Sutra means Brahma Sutra or um, yeah, Brahma Sutra and other books that help in the correct expounding of its meaning. So like Panchadeshi also it, it supports that. Or commentaries and other, other, uh, other books like Gita, etc. So 
So it is another Sharika Sutra is Vadarana Sutra also because Vyasadeva. He wanted to to divide Veda for understanding. So he divided Vedas into four. And not only four, he composed 555 sutras, aphorisms, to convey the whole Veda, what is enshrined in Veda, that he expounded through those sutras. So Sharide, Sharia, this body is called Sharira. And who resides in this body is called Sharira. So Shariraka, that which leads to the embodiment who resides in this body. So that's all Shariraka Sutra. So, so evidences are, there are six kinds of evidences that is in Vedanta. So first is direct perception without any medium, without any agency. So direct perception. So that's called pratyaksha. And the second is in inference. That means anumana. So when we say that, you know, there is a smoke, we can see at distance. So we know that there is fire by our inference. So that is another kinds of evidence. Then upamana, so an analogy. So we we get some like he is very brave. He's like a lion. Yeah, oh, thank you. Okay, so we'll start stop here this time and we'll continue. So in short, let me read that whole thing. Akhandam Satchidanandam Avang Manasa Gocharam Atmanam Akhiladharam Asrai Avishta Siddhe Arthatopi Advayananda Atita Dvaita Bhanataha Gurun Aradhya Vedanta Saram Vakshi Yathamati Vedanta Nama Upanishad Pramanam Tad Upakarini Sharirika Sutra Dinicha. So we'll continue from here. So thank you very much. Is there any question that is not clear? Yes, yes please. Go ahead. Okay, okay. My question is, because I really want to make sure that I'm tracking correctly, is that going back towards the further part, the beginning part, when you talked about um, two parts, first of all, the Upanishads as the gist of what is available as knowledge. Number two, Karmakanda, goal of life. Number three, Upanishada Kanda. And number four, Gyana Kanda. Am I tracking that correctly? No, three things. First is karma kanda. Okay, one is karma kanda. Rituals. Okay. So anything we start with ritual, you can see. Okay, got it. Then after that comes upasana, not upanishad. Upasana. Upa asana. Asana is you know seat, sitting close by. So after the puja, what we do? We say, let us meditate. Then we meditate. That's called Upasana. So they are still, God is separate and the person who is worshipping is separate. Okay. Third comes Jnana. Jnana. Jnana Kanda. Jnana Kanda means that which unifies. You know, in the beginning I said Jnana has got a few connotations. Even an animal has knowledge. But that knowledge pertaining to its safety or food or basic things. But the knowledge that we are trying to do, say when you want to make something, 
say you want to cook something. So that also is another kind of knowledge. But that knowledge is only pertaining to this world. And then if you want to make something, say somebody wants to compose a poetry or paint something or a carpenter. So he, out of his knowledge, he creates that. And there it is tapas. When you are thinking, that time also heat is generated. But ultimately, this knowledge releases us. You know, um, there is a story. Let me tell a story. A washerman used to take all his laundry, you know, the clothes, etc., on a donkey. He used to take to to a water body and um, would do his job, and then will go back. But after reaching, he would tie his donkey with a with a um, uh, with a rope to a tree. But that day he forgot to bring that rope. So he was worried how to do about it. Then a good man was there. He said, don't worry. You, you pain, you just uh, appear that you are tying like this <laughs> by going around. <laughs> and the donkey will think that he's tied. <laughs> so, okay, that's, that's not jnana, that's ignorance. <laughs> no, no, just a minute, just a minute. So he, he tied that way. And after that, after, and donkey did not move. Before that, it was going away this way, that way. But after the washing was over, he put all the load, but donkey was not moving. The good man told, you are also a fool. You have to untie. You <laughs> have to feign that you are untying it. And then you tell the donkey, it, it will move. So he did the same thing. He uh, appeared that he was untying the donkey and then the donkey moved. <laughs> so ours is also like that. We study Upanishad to know that we are beyond all limitations. And then we are free. So this is the fourth kind of knowledge which frees us sa vidya ya vimuktaye that is, what is vidya it? what Call is number 4 eh? what is the fourth we've talked about karmakanda upasana jnana kanda what's number 4 oh no jnana has yeah. four dimensions oh okay one is like uh, all our actions are done. Okay. Animals also has got, that's a fear, food, all kinds of things. This is animal like uh, uh, knowledge. Mm -hmm. We have also fear from falling, fear for attraction for food. This is animal like. Animal like. And then when you want to create something, say you cook or day to day living, that also is another manifestation of knowledge. And then if you want to create something or you want to sit close to God, that's another kind of knowledge. But the fourth kind of knowledge will release you from all your uh, ills. So that is knowledge, but it is highest kind of knowledge. That means we understand, our mind will understand we are untied. <laughs> and then like a donkey, then we'll move. <laughs> Got the point? Yes, I'm taking notes, sorry. <laughs> okay. And before we go, I have one other question and then I promise I'll be quiet. When you were talking about the six systems of philosophy, it started with Shankya? Yes, yeah, Shankya. Then and yoga is number yoga, two. 
Yeah. Nyaya means logic and Vaisheshika. Okay, I missed that. I've transposed those. Okay, Nishishta is four. Yeah, Vaisheshika. And then Purva Mimamsa, Uttar Mimamsa. Okay, so there, okay. I added an extra word. I'm sorry, because I'm not familiar with the terms. Okay. Okay, good. All right. Uh, I'm sure we'll revisit some of this next week. Pardon? I said I'm sure we'll revisit this some of next week. Okay. <laughs> Swami? Yeah. I have it, a question, although it, it seems like you're comparing us all to donkeys, but we'll, <laughs> we'll, uh, um, but the question is not about that. The question is, the I, I'm trying to understand the relationship between the Vedanta Sara and Viveka Chudamani because it seems like the Viveka Chudamani is at the essence of Vedanta. Um, what, what, why, why was the Vedanta Sara written, given that the uh, Viveka Chudamani already existed? No, no. These are called Prakarana Grantha, like Prakarana means. The Vivek Churamini is also Prakarana Grantha and Vedanta Sara is also Prakarana Grantha. So, yeah, just a minute. So, what is the need of this? The need is even Vivek Churamini is long enough. It is concise and some you will find some beauty. That means it will define what is Vedanta what is Adhikari? Adhikari means the competent person. What is the topic, subject matter? What is the summon, the relationship? All these basic things, it will be clear in this. Okay, this is one point. Second point you said, we are relating with a donkey. We are like that. We are already free. But we don't think that we are free. Till God comes and unties us, then we feel free. Or we can say, Gurus come and tell that you are free. Then we say, yeah, yeah, I am free. So, this is, you know, when in a simile, everything may not be the same. When I say that you are or somebody is a, like lion. It doesn't mean that he has a big face like lion. But his bravery is like that. So something is being related. You have to take that relation. Not to feel bad because <laughs> we are being equated with a donkey. Got the point? Thank, thank you, Swami. I'm quite relieved. <laughs> yeah. And you'll see the difference. Vivek Chulaman is very good and very poetic. It, it, it was composed in poetry. But here it is prose. And some areas were not um, covered in Vivek Churamani, where you'll find this. And for that matter, everything. You cannot say everything in one, say you cannot test all tastes in one curry. You'll have to have separate, you know, curry and sweet and sour and this and that. And we enjoy all. And Vedanta is not limited. It includes everything, as in the beginning I said. Right? So thank you. We will say our prayer. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shantihi 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 Harihi Om Tasat Sri Ramakrishna Ramastu. I'll narrate another another incident. You know you can see that 
Mm. In a drama, people dress up in a beautiful way. And people are attracted. But when they remove their attire, and then what happens? We, they are not that attracted. It's all like painting. So, here we have to take the gist. It is not what, you know, many things are, you know, in a drama, you see, when you rep represent something, in drama, that's the usage, that there will be opposing person, will question, and you have to answer. So, it takes lots of time to understand what is the gist. But here it is the gist that is given you. So this is the difference. Okay. Thank you very much. Jema. 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 Thank you, Swami. Thank you. <laughs> Namaste. Namaste, Swami.